Welcome to another episode of Tarantino Thursdays. This week we're going to talk about Pulp Fiction, which was the second instalment to the Tarantino written and directed movies. Tarantino Thursday, Tarantino. Okay. I'm leaving. <laughs> Crooks. I'm Curtis York. Welcome to Unofficial Review. Today we're going to talk about Pulp Fiction. We'll race out. Pulp, yeah. <laughs> Pulp Fiction. Basically, Pulp Fiction is a anthology almost sort of film. Uh, bases around uh, about five or six characters. You get two hitmen, you get a boxer who's meant to fall on a, one of his rounds, and you're meant to get a hitman's girlfriend, as well as two robbers. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Obviously, this film was written and directed by Quentin Tarantino, but the cast of this film is so vast. You've got the likes of John Travolta, Tim Roth, Samuel L. Jackson, Harvey Keitel, Christopher Walken, Christopher Walken's son, Jr. What? <laughs> you forget who's in that? <laughs> Uma Thurman, Vig Rhymes, Bruce Willis, and a fuckload of other people that you'll know from the 90s films. Came out in 1994. It was around two and a half hours long, maybe a bit longer. Yeah, it but is a long yeah. film, like so. It feels is. a bit longer, I think, because it's the all way, dialogue. Yeah, it's all dialogue. Yeah. It's one of them movies that you're gonna have to sit down, brain on. It's like watching yeah. Interstellar. Maybe not as bad as Interstellar. <laughs> it was a mind. Fuck. I honestly haven't watched Interstellar. Oh, you have to watch it. Oh, it's good. Might be one for this. Oh, we will review it. <laughs> but yeah, so you get uh, John Travolta and Samuel L. Jackson. They play two hitmen, and they're the most interesting characters of Pulp Fiction because they're not like the hitmen you see in other films. Whenever they're going on a job, they're not talking about how much they hate whoever they're going to kill, or they're not talking about the job in hand. They're talking about eating burgers and rubbing Basically people's feet. Shite. Yeah. Talking shite. Like the shit you talk like, with your mates. Yeah, it's like the shit you talk whenever you're out in a bar. Yeah. Like it's good banter yeah. between them, so it is, it's but a lot. It it shows you that they don't care about killing people. No. Like it shows you like the emotion has gone. Yeah, it's just an everyday occurrence yeah. for them. Which. But then you also get Uma Thurman who plays Mia Wallace, which is John Travolta and Samuel Jackson's boss. So, John Travolta's character gets tasked with taking her out on a date, basically, yeah. while he's out of town to show her a good time. And shit goes sideways in that date. Probably was my least favourite scene. Yeah. I when they were out on their date. I don't know, like, it's just a lot of dancing, a lot of talking. It was just a bit like, yeah, a bit like you were third wheel and wanting to go home. That's what it felt like. <laughs> yeah, because the whole scene is mostly dialogue. Like, yeah. it starts off, he goes into like her apartment. You got yeah. Dusty Springfield, son of a preacher man, playing and all, and you kind of get the. That's whenever you get to know her character. Not even so much through dialogue, but the way she acts. And you find out with a lot of characters in this here. If you watch them, you'll sort of figure out how they're going to perform in certain situations and stuff. So. They end up going to this diner, Jack Rabbit Slims. You see Steve Buscemi plays like a cameo role as Buddy Holly, the waiter and stuff at times, but that whole scene is all dialogue and then a little dance number. Yeah. That's basically though, John Fall, everybody knows it, he's a brilliant dancer. Like Oh yeah. So Obviously, they're going to throw in a bit of dancing for him. I like. think he, uh, they were originally only meant to do the twist, but then they're like, we got John Travolta here, we might yeah, as so well he... use him and do some other things. Yep. So... <laughs> they have that little date and shit goes sideways, and then it's dealing with that situation. Yeah. And then the way the story's carried, it's non-linear, so it'll like throw you back a couple of hours or a couple of days, and you'll have Dutch's story, who is played by Bruce Willis. Yeah. And he's a boxer, meant to a boxer who's meant to throw a fight, but instead he betrays the gang and yeah. does a runner. So his whole story is about him on the run, on the basically, run, basically. Yeah. yeah. But then he has to go back 
and get a watch that his girlfriend like left behind and stuff and that's how shit happens with him and you said it's one of your favourite scenes. Oh yeah, definitely. Like there's like it's about ten minutes long. It's bring out the gimp. I think that's what the scene it is, is a great scene called. Yeah. But you have to like if you have, how you haven't watched it, I don't know how. <laughs> but it is a brilliant scene. Yeah. And then like just the way it plays out it's brilliant as well because it's it's dark slow and dark very dark and intense like <laughs> just so dark you're kind of like it's one of those ones where you're like oh no they're not going to go that far and do that it'll be like something will happen before that happens and then <laughs> they went there yeah um honestly i think it's hard to almost pick out a great scene like are my favorite scene in this film at times because there's so many different great scenes that happen yeah. in it and that's what carries the film because yes it's a long film and yes you have to pay attention because there's so much deposition in early scenes yeah. that foreshadow what will happen later on in the film and stuff and there's even like a bookend like the beginning of the film is the end of the film yeah. and things like that but it's, it can be really slow sorry yeah. it can be really slow but if you went and got a drink from the kitchen and came back Something serious could have yeah. happened. Or you missed said. the main plot points. Like, there's have. bits where like some of, they'd be talking and that, and something major has happened. Yeah. That turns the movie completely. Like so, you literally can't take your eyes off the screen because something could happen. And then Winston Wolf, who is played by Harvey Cartel, he's rode that train right up until now. He's yeah. doing fucking direct line. Yeah. Adverts. Insurance adverts and all for playing Who like you characters. Call? <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> like, it's still going to this day. Like it's still one of the best movies. And that shows the influence this film's yep. had on modern times, and yep. I think everything since it came out, really, to be honest. Yeah. But. Yeah, it's up there with the top Tarantino films, yeah. honestly. So it is like, I still prefer Reservoir Dogs over this, but this is a great film. I don't think I'd watch it every, like, year or something. It'd be every couple of years yeah. I'd maybe watch it because it is so long and you do need to have the time to sit down and pay attention to it because if you don't pay you attention, need at least you're missing hours it. For this kind of movie, oh, yeah. you know, just a few stats to read out to you. It was initially released on the 14th of October, 1994. It's the day after my birthday. <laughs> um, language is is English, Spanish and French. Country of origin, clearly, USA. It was filmed at 1435 Flower Street, Glendale, California, USA. Never heard of it. No. Um, the budget for this movie was $8 million estimated. The opening weekend was 9.3 million. So on the opening weekend alone, they had already made their money, plus some. To date, it has grossed over 108 million US dollars. So that is a big, big like hit. Oh yeah. But I think what carried it would have been the actors and the director. Like yeah. that was what probably got it. So like Reservoir Dogs made a name for Tarantino, and then. For him to go on to this <coughs> film with the vast cast that hey, he John has. Hey, John Volta, people love Grease. Yeah. You know, there's one. There's Samuel Jackson, like. I know Bruce Willis was going yeah, up the Bruce ranks Willis, as well yeah. at the time. And then the so, fact they had Christopher Walken and all. Yeah. Like, even though there were only cameo parts. And then even Tim Roth was making his name. Yeah. So, like, they were all Tim Roth's big. Tim a great actor, anyway. Yeah, I know. I think one of my standout scenes for this film was the very end. And it is mostly a monologue from Samuel L. Jackson to Tim Roth and he does his famous Ezekiel line from the Bible that he's memorized and he's like oh, I used to think it was a cold-blooded thing to say before killing someone yeah. you know it'd be badass but then he takes it on almost literally after something happens in the film so instead of saying it in a sadistic vengeful way he says it towards Tim Roth as a more of a what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of like discharge the situation or what do you call it? Isn't it? Yeah. Like, the tear from... Like, because they're Rob, Tim Roth's character and the other girl are Robin, a diner that he's yeah. in. And they come up to him and he's like, you need to reach into my wallet, into the bag and get me my wallet. It says, bad motherfucker on it <laughs> and stuff. And he sits him down and he's like, any other day, I'd kill you <laughs> yeah. here and now. But he's having like an enlightened moment, so he changes the Ezekiel thing around to be more sympathetic and guiding yeah, towards the character rather than... Rather than Vengeful. vengeful and kill him. Yeah, so he takes a, a new turn on it and all, yeah. but I just thought the whole scene was great because there's long moments scene, where you think it's, it's a really yeah. long scene, there's moments you think it's gonna <laughs> sprawl off and get gunfight and all, but it never reaches that sort of peak. Yeah, but you just never know what way it was gonna go. I know. And then that 
scenes set friggin' hours before other scenes in the film yeah, all even happen. Yeah, it's crazy, like. I know. But, but done so well. Yeah. Like, it's put together amazing. Tarantino did a great job with this film yep. because with the writing and the direction, it just carries this long film. Although it feels long, it's worth it in the end. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Would you add it to your collection? You I have it in my collection. <laughs> um... Would you watch it again? Of course I would, but I wouldn't watch yeah. it every year, I'd watch it every couple of years. Yeah, for me, I'd watch it, I don't know, maybe every three, four years. It would be a hard one to watch every It's year one you need to something. be in the mood yeah. for, I think. You need to have your time it's like, to sit For me, it's like a mature chill. cheese, but he likes mature cheese. But for me, like a mature cheese, you can have little bits, little and often. I eat mature cheese almost every day, so <laughs> that, that analogy doesn't work for me. Yeah. But, but I think I would give it probably an 8.5 rating wise. I would, that's what I was going to go for, like yeah. 8.5. 8.5, yeah. so that's a solid 8.5 from us. Well, yep. If you haven't seen it, you have to go watch it. Exactly. Uh, thanks for watching Tarantino yeah. Thursdays. Next week we're going to review Jackie Brown, which I basically have never seen. And I have never seen. So it'll be all new to us. So I can't wait. Yeah, hopefully it's good. Yep. So thanks for watching. Um, please subscribe. Bye.